this um, series on uh, the triumph of love over fear. I really put it together knowing we're coming up on this, this Halloween season where we talk about things that make us afraid. And really, um, this morning's title, The Unseen Foe, recognizing um, that there's an enemy out there, that there's an enemy out there, and, and that, that that enemy is real. I need to clarify what we are talking about when we talk about true love triumphs over fear. There are things in this world that are consequences of reality. Gravity, for instance, if I walk off the edge of the stage, I'm going to fall, and I'm of an age that that's most likely going to cause some kind of damage to my body, and guess what else? I'm also of an age that it might take me longer to recover from that damage than it used to, and so I need to be aware that while as a kid I would have ridden my bike off the edge of that stage and had no question about it, I might have gotten hurt, but it would have lasted half an hour and I've been back on my bike. That's not true of this guy anymore, and so there are things that we need to be cautious about. When we talk about true love triumphing over fear, it's not there are real consequences in life that, that connect to things like illness and stuff like that that you can't get rid of. And so this is not talking about being foolish. However, last week Tom talked, and, and by the way, wasn't that a great message last week? Can we just say? <laughs> and, and I have to tell you this, this is the way it happens with Lynn and I. When we're traveling, she's like, well, first of all, it's so great not to have to worry about where we're gonna find a church. <laughs> because we don't try to, we, we don't tend to travel in places where there's a lot of churches and stuff like that. So knowing that we have that to look forward to, but Lynn will start looking at it as soon as we get a chance. And I'm like, no, don't tell me anything. No spoilers. And she's, oh, Tom, this was great. And this song was great. And like, stop telling me about it because I like to, to have the chance to um, just take it in myself and look forward to that. Um, and, and, but Tom, at the end of his message, he made a challenge and, and, it's such a, and we didn't plan this, but God does. I mean, it's amazing how this works. He talked about Psalm 139, where it says, and he made the challenge, open your heart for God to search you and know you. And he was talking about those people, the people that in life we might not like or might not be comfortable with. And typically, if we don't like somebody, it means that on some level we're afraid of them. And, and so that's just a reality. And, and I, I, I deal with that. I, I think I'm better at it than I used to be. I think I'm more comfortable around certain, uh, certain, in certain situations than I used to be. But the truth is that there is in our hearts something that we need to bring to God, that we really need to bring to God. And today's message, this is the this is the second part. First service was a, was, um, a, a different message. Um, and I want to remind you that at 11 o'clock on Mondays, we cover the whole thing, look at the, the whole passage together right in that room and also online. But I want to read to you from the beginning of this passage, First John chapter, 1, chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. Um, this morning, we're going to look in this service at 1 to 3, but I'm going to read you the whole thing because I want you to hear this. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge that Jesus is from, is from God... <clears throat> but I'm sorry, but every spirit that's dot, 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 dot. <laughs> yes, I can read, <laughs> just not right at this moment. Let me start over with verse two of 1 John chapter four. <laughs> this is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world. Hear that. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God 
And whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. So in the first service, we talked about that second passage, and I just want to highlight verse four. You are from God and have overcome them, and this is the key, because the one who is in you, meaning Jesus Christ, if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, no matter how powerful and how, or how recent, how long that has been, if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, this is a truth. Greater is the one who is in you than the one who is in the world, meaning those spiritual forces, and they're real. Spiritual warfare is a reality. Jesus spent a lot of time dealing with demons, and we're gonna look at that in a little bit. But I want you to remember that second part, that there is no reason to fear those people, except if we're not certain about whose people we are. So the search me and know me, look into my heart part that Tom talked about last week, part of what we need to do is recognize, am I really, have I really let Jesus Christ be the one who is in charge of my life? Then that doesn't mean perfect behavior. That means perfectly willing to submit. And your behavior is gonna change over time. But it starts with what you think and feel. And so if, if there is truly one in my heart that is greater than anything else that I need to fear, then I need to let any fear that I have, and I'm talking mainly about people, any fear that I have about what people say or do, any fear about other people taking something away from me, about making me uncomfortable or making me nervous, any reason why I might not want to witness to them, because this is what it's all about, folks. The reason we're using this movie theme, let me remind you that we are called not to defend who God is. He doesn't need our help. We are called not to define Scripture and defend it. It has sustained truth in the face of many threats for a long, long time. We are called very clearly, and Jesus made it as simple as he could, and since he said these words, we have tried to make a mess of it. Jesus said very simply, listen, I'm leaving. Here's what I want you to remember. You are to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We are to be witnesses, and if we forget what it is we're to witness, is it that there are things to be afraid of? Did Jesus ever tell us to go tell people what to be afraid of? Is there anything in anything that Jesus taught? If you haven't read the whole Bible, let, let me tell you there isn't. He said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to love God, and I want you to love your neighbor, and let's not lose this. I want you to love yourself. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. So if we are people of love and our job is to witness, then the world needs to see our biopic they need to see that your life is a witness not to what people should be afraid of and not to what the world already knows because we're gonna talk about that in just a second, but there's a whole lot of truth about demons and about the reality of what we should be afraid of that most people get whether they recognize it or not. So we are called to be witnesses, but we need to be witnesses that show the world what it means to live in the world today without fear. True love, perfect love, the God that loves me so much, he loves every part of me, and he died to redeem me, that kind of love drives out any kind of fear because fear has to do with eternal consequences and punishment. Fear has to do with the impact that sin has in our lives. Now let's look at this first, first part of this, 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So what this is telling us is, there are all kinds of unseen forces, that's a given. It's been true since long before people started writing stuff down, and we all know that there's something out there that we can't define. We know that there's some power, some people say good and evil, there's a very clear truth, and that is that God is the number one, 
and he doesn't need us to prove that. God is the only, it's not a balance of good and evil. There's evil out there, yes, but God's goodness is so much better than any evil that can be amassed that God has won this victory. Satan doesn't have a chance, and when, when, the, God, when the word tells us to test the spirits and listen to the prophets, we have to ask ourselves, are we hearing something that we need to respond to, and if so, how do we respond? And how do we know what we listen to? How do we know what voices to take seriously? Because there is all kinds of information out there. People calling themselves preachers, and this, this applies to me, it applies to Tom, applies to anybody who stands up here, anybody who claims to be speaking on God's behalf. Anybody who, be claim, who claims to be telling us what we should think about in the future, whether it's an economic p- prediction, whether, you know, I don't care if it's somebody saying fuel prices are going to $8 and, and you need to be worried about that. If it's something you're thinking about fearing about, then you need to ask the question, is this something I should really fear? Because if the world sees that Jesus Christ doesn't give you any more peace than not knowing Jesus Christ, if you're just as anxious about fuel prices and political change and what your neighbors might look like and how things have altered since you were a little kid, if you're worried about everything everybody else is worried about, then folks, we got nothing to offer the world. Because nobody needs to be a part of something that doesn't improve their lives. If Jesus Christ hasn't made a difference in the outcome of our lives, if we can't say that we find peace and joy in places others don't see it, if we can't say, I don't have to worry about what's gonna, I don't, you know, I never worry about fuel prices. You know why? Because I'm ready for Jesus to come back tomorrow and then I'm not gonna have to worry about it. And all I can tell is that what I've needed to do in my life to make it better is not improve what's on the outside, but work on what's on the inside. And the more peace that I can find with Russ and the more that I can know that I don't need to be afraid of the stuff that really can rattle my cage. I don't need to be, there are spiritual temptations that we all have. And I know what my demons are. I know the places where, my, where my, I am most easily tempted. And I know that in the times that I am easily tempted, and it doesn't matter what that temptation is, oftentimes that temptation that gets us first is the temptation to be judgmental. Tom talks about this all the time. Tom talks about this all the time, about how the, ch- the challenges, he talked about Debbie Downers and watchmakers. And he talked about that because Tom knows that there are people in this world that it's difficult for Tom to get to love, to understand that love, and it's true for all of us. Being judgmental is one of those temptations. When I start to think, should that person do this? Should that person do that? Should this person, might that person, might not this? Whenever I think about those things, I have to come back to this very simple truth. Whose voice am I hearing? Whose voice am I hearing? Because if I'm not hearing the voice of Christ, if I'm not hearing a voice that demands, and this is, this is what it says, This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. So if I think I should be worried about somebody, or if I think somebody's doing something wrong and I should tell them, or if I think that I should do something that that indulges a fear that I have, I ask the question, is this the Spirit of God? Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Now, it starts with, dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see. And this is why it's important. This is why our witness is important. In Mark chapter 1, the first voices to name who Jesus is, to speak the truth about who Jesus is, are not the people that are watching what he's doing. They recognize that he's a healer and they recognize that he's a prophet. That's fine. But Mark 31 says, Mark chapter one, verses 32 and 33 says says this. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Jesus did not let the demons articulate the truth. 
He silenced their voices. Now, there's two things to know about that. One, demonic activity is real. You don't need to be worried about it. You don't need to be afraid of it. But we can't pretend that it's not real because Jesus dealt with it directly. He silenced the voices of the demons because witness is all that matters in this world. We don't need to worry about the truth. God has established the truth, and whether it's gravity or who's the winner in the war of, in spiritual warfare, it doesn't matter. God has established the truth. God is the truth. There is one God, and that God is all-powerful. How God manifests himself to us is important in that it makes our witness. Jesus did not want the character of demons to be witnessing for him. Character matters, folks. Character matters. Those who are fear mongers, which is exactly what demons are, the only tactic they have is fear. Those who are fear mongers are not from Christ because that's not the character that Jesus allows to speak. To be concerned, to have doubts, to be unsure of yourself, that's one thing. To be uncertain that you want to move forward and afraid if your witness is going to be adequate, that's one thing. But the demonic activity that Jesus is talking about is the kind of stuff that is so unsettling and so uncertain that, you, that they just disrupted things. That's why they were there being cast out. In addition to the very real maladies that people had, there is this internal disruption that can't be connected to anything other than demonic possession or fear. And just, just so you know, everything isn't demonic possession. Fear, there is, there's activity around us doesn't mean that you're doing something or that you've given your life over to, to demons, but it's just real. It's just there. It's around. And so the things that generate fear are not, the, the, here's the important piece, those things that generate fear are not the voices of witness that Jesus wants to identify the truth of who he is. And so he silences them. That's what it says in Mark chapter 1. And it goes on in Mark chapter 3. Whenever the impure spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, you are the son of God. So they had a chance. It sounds like they're worshiping. They fell down and cried out, you're the son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell anyone else about him. Again, why does Jesus do this? Because biopics matter. Because the witness of your life matters. Because what I say up here is irrelevant if the life I live out there isn't in harmony with the truth of my need of redemption. Because the demons can identify who Jesus is, but their lives don't reflect the joy and the peace that God, that he offers. And in his days after crucifixion, when he appears before the disciples, he says, my peace I leave with you. I don't give you a peace like the world gives. I give you a peace that passes human understanding. That's the witness that changes lives. Jesus did not want demons witnessing for him because they don't have what he wants us to see. They don't have the character that warrants the truth of who he is. So when our, when our lives reflect a peace that passes understanding, when our lives are grounded in perfect love that says, you can do nothing that will ever make me stop loving you. If you haven't heard your Savior say that, you need to pause and let that happen. Because the perfect love that drives out fear is the love of a Savior that says, you can't sin more than I can forgive. You can't fall more often, than, not that I can lift you up, what Jesus did is not just lift us up, he fell with us. Do you hear that? When you fall on your knees, when you fall on your face, when you're abjectly lost and completely alone, Jesus doesn't say, here I am, until he's right beside you. And he says, here we are. Perfect love that drives out fear is the perfect love of a Savior that falls alongside us and doesn't stay down there with us, but remains alongside us as long as it takes for us to say, okay, 
I'm ready, help me. That's why the witness, that's why the words of the demons were silenced. Dear friends, don't believe everything you hear. But stop and ask, is this, is this the voice, the Spirit of God? Is this the one that speaks the truth to my heart? And here's all I would ask, and this is, this is a prayer life thing as we, um, as we wind up. And so for the baptism folks, it'll be just a minute, we'll call you, we'll call you up. Um, so what do you do with this? Listen to the first service message and put these two together, but for, for this part of it, for the, the, don't, don't let the spiritual warfare overtake you. Here's, here's what I ask you to do. Take this to prayer and spend time when you discover yourself being fearful, whatever it is. It doesn't matter where it comes from. I'm not the arbiter of truth or information. That's not my point. When you find yourself being fearful, don't ask, is this true? But stop and pray, is this from you, Jesus? Use his name. The name of Jesus Christ is important to speak. We can't just say God. This is a personal relationship. I, I bristle. I don't ever speak about my wife. That's Lynn. That's the person I married. Wife is a title. God is a title. Jesus Christ is a person. Savior is an activity. Jesus Christ is a person. I have a relationship with Lynn. I don't, really, I don't refer to Tom as the lay leader. He's Tom because he's a person. We need to use the name of Jesus Christ because the name has meaning. It reflects a personal relationship. So when you find yourself thinking, should I be afraid of this? Just ask Jesus, should I be afraid of this? Is this from you, Lord? And if you hear, yes, it's from me, turn tail and run. But if you don't hear, yes, this is from me, then take a minute and say, help me figure this out. Strengthen me. You know, perfect love driving out fear isn't a one-time event. I used to think that my salvation, although it's secured for eternity in my decision to ask Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior, that doesn't happen just once. I need to recognize every morning I wake up, I'm a man in need of salvation. And there are days that I, that I have to ask Jesus all day long to help me figure out how to deal with this in a way that would honor him and not respond to it in a way that, that, that recognizes fear. Because it might seem like I'm really confident, and most of the time I am, but that is not because I never have fear. It's because I try sincerely to let the truth of those fears come before God and see what I should keep and what I shouldn't. Let's pray for a minute. Thank you, God, for caring enough to send your son. Thank you for wanting us to live lives that are free from the distortion of fear and spiritual warfare, that we have no one to fear because in the end, we win because you have won. And we ask now that you would continue speaking to us as we shall celebrate this young life and come to you again recognizing that we need each other in this journey that we call faith. And for that, we thank you and praise you. Amen.